You're headed to Mars on a spaceship that's running out of oxygen. What do you do? Welcome back to Movies Explained. Today's film is a sci fi thriller from 2021 titled Stowaway. A spacecraft with a crew of three is headed for a two year mission on Mars. The crew, consisting of biologist David Kim, medical researcher Zoe Levinson, and mission captain Marina Barnett. The spacecraft launches with major turbulence but everyone remains calm. The second stage separation of the spacecraft approaches, but the captain sees a problem with the sensors and tells the crew to lower their visors. Captain Barnett requests to abort, but the command center assures them that they have enough fuel to handle the discrepancy. They have left the Earth's atmosphere and are now in zero gravity. Captain Barnett remains diligent as they approach the satellite ship, the captain detaches from one final piece of the launching ship and nears the connection port for the satellite ship. The ship comes to a clean connection, this engages the artificial gravity, and the ship and the satellite ship are now spinning in unison. David gets sick, but they are safely connected. The crew boards the satellite ship and begins to look around. On the wall are patches from past crews. They unload their personal items into their bunks and begin various jobs to get the ship into working order. Zoe takes a moment to stare amazed back at Earth. She goes back to her bunk and sees a Harvard pennant hanging by David's bunk. Later she finds him in the kitchen and brings him water in a Yale mug, they joke about the rivalry. The crew then gathers for a video call with mission control. On the call, mild difficulties of the launch are addressed and we find out that this is the captain's third mission of this sort. Zoe says she realizes how life-changing this mission is. She jokes that she only planned to do research on Earth and that she applied to this space program because she thought it would be a funny story to say she was rejected from HARP. The call ends with the captain praising Zoe and David, saying they are highly capable of managing whatever comes their way. As Captain Barnett is making her rounds, she notices blood on the floor, she suspects that the blood is dripping from the panel above. She unscrews the panel and the body of an injured, unconscious man falls out. The man is taken to the infirmary, where Zoe and David cut his suit off, and Zoe stitches up a large wound on the man's side. The captain returns to inspect the panel where the man fell from. The gas is still leaking, concerned the captain leaves, finding an ID badge on her way out, and closing the airtight door behind her. The captain relays the damages to the command center, saying it is limited to the functional module and that atmospheric oxygen had leaked, due to a breach in the hull of the spacecraft. She also mentions the man, who the badge identified as Michael Adams. Command confirms the man is not a danger to them, but they are still unsure if he was an intentional stowaway or if he is there by accident. Captain Barnett's arm is broken from attempting to catch Michael as he fell. Zoe prints an arm cast on a 3D printer and puts her arm in a cast that she recommends she use for at least six weeks. Captain Barnett tells the team that the CO2 in the ship is up 3% and that there was damage, they agree to hold off on exercise to reserve oxygen until the damage is assessed. Michael wakes up, in a lot of pain he wanders the ship until he finds a large window. At the distant side of Earth, he begins to hyperventilate. Zoe comes in and helps him get his breathing under control. As Captain Barnett questions Michael, we find out that he is a launch support engineer for Hyperion, the company the crew is employed by. Michael was working on the ship, his harness wasn't clipped in and he had fallen getting knocked unconscious. Michael is told he was knocked out for about 12 hours. He begins to panic and asks them to turn the ship around, Captain Barnett lets him know that that is impossible. Michael, flustered and confused tells the crew that he must return to his sister who is underage and all alone. After a while, Michael enters the kitchen to find the rest of the crew eating, David helps him to the table as Michael still struggles to walk. The captain explains to Michael that his sister is okay and that Hyperion was hiring a full-time guardian to watch over her and covering the costs. By this point, Michael is much calmer and he apologizes for his reaction earlier and says he wants to help rather than take up space. Captain Barnett says they are awaiting orders from Hyperion and asks Zoe to give Michael a safety tour to get acquainted with the ship. Zoe offers him spaghetti and they find out that Michael is in school working on a structural engineering degree, planning to submit for the next HARP mission. Zoe jokes that he doesn't have to apply anymore and they welcome Michael to the crew. The crew decides that Michael didn't intentionally stow away and David says maybe Michael can do data entry for him. In the morning, Zoe gives Michael the safety tour and then Michael goes back to the window to view Earth, this time more in awe than panic, telling Zoe how pictures don't do justice with the view of Earth. He and Zoe talk about Michael's sister Ava, and how hard it is for him to be away. Later in the lab where microgreens are growing, Michael is helping David with logging and data entry as jazz is being played in the background. Michael is not a fan of jazz but David tells him he thinks it's a pure form of expression. Zoe and Captain Barnett are inspecting the damaged unit, where Michael was found. Zoe reports that there must have been a short and that the system is charred. Captain calls the control center and says that it is critical to the mission that the system gets fixed. Zoe and Michael go to remove the unit, while David and the captain speak privately. 
When the captain asks, David says the microgreens are producing about 90 liters of oxygen a day, but the captain asks for 950 liters. David is skeptical and says his equipment is on Mars and it could compromise all of his work over the last few years. The captain explains that the damaged CDRA is what removes CO2 from the air and that it may not be fixable. David agrees to start the algae, reserving half of it for a potential starter on Mars. The algae produces only half of the required oxygen needed, so the captain urges David to use the other half of the algae. David tells the captain how years of his work will go down the drain because the algae is meant to be used on Mars and suggests they wait for the CDRA repairs. The captain nervously tells David that the CDRA is damaged beyond repair. David is at loss for words but agrees to get to work right away. The captain then tells Zoe and David that the ship only has enough oxygen for two people and a third with the healthy half of the algae and that Michael must go. Zoe is shocked and offers to climb the tethers and recover the liquid oxygen that might be left in the upper stage rocket, but Captain Barnett rejects her saying that's a 450 meter climb and way too dangerous. The captain informs David and Zoe that everyone with a PhD at Hyperion is working to find a solution and are unable to come up with anything. After a lengthy discussion, they agree that Michael may stay 10 days to make sure there is no other options but David and the captain both aren't sure about the decision. Zoe is changing the bandage on Michael's hip, Michael begins to tell Zoe about the massive burn scar he has, he says it's from an apartment fire when he and his sister Eva were kids, and how his father was able to rescue them but he never made it out, he shows Zoe the bracelet Eva gave him and tells her he is Eva's legal guardian now. As Zoe's back on her bunk, the thoughts of having to take Michael's life makes her break down and she starts crying. Three days later, David goes to the infirmary and gets a lethal injection for Michael, he walks up to him and explains the situation explains how they decided to keep the problem from Michael as they searched for a solution. He tells Michael that all efforts to find a solution have been exhausted and tells Michael the injection will be painless and will be like falling asleep. David put the injection next to Michael and walks out. As David leaves, Michael is devastated and heartbroken. He thinks about Eva and breaks down in tears. Zoe comes to the window to find Michael looking at Earth. As she tries to find out if he's okay she sees the injection device beside him. She insists that he doesn't have to do it. Zoe convinces him not to give up yet, that they still have a little bit of time. Zoe very angered that David didn't wait until the 10 days was up confronts him. David explains that every day they wait they put their lives in even more jeopardy. Still unsure what to do, Zoe suggests climbing the tethers up the ship to look for extra oxygen. She tries to teach Michael how to use the climbing equipment, but is unsuccessful. David agrees to help after revealing that now all of the algae had died which meant they now had oxygen for only two people. David and Zoe suit up to begin their trek. The captain was unable to go because of her broken arm. Before they leave, David begins to apologize to Michael, but Michael interrupts and says it's fine. They grab two empty oxygen tanks and climb out, Zoe is doing well, but David appears to be feeling nauseated from the spinning of the ship. He says he's good and they begin their climb slow and steady upward. After a while, David stops Zoe and says he needs a rest. After a short break, the pair continue. As they approach the halfway point, the captain warns them not to touch the solar panels or they could risk the entire ship losing power permanently. Zoe safely climbs through the section of panels first and then pulls David through safely as well. Down the other side, they move quickly and slide to a safe landing, arriving at their destination. After a brief glance over the edge into space, David ties a rope around a pole and clips it to Zoe, who then propels down the side of the spacecraft. Zoe arrives at the compartment and as she opens it the door falls off and drifts into space. Zoe maintains her grip and climbs into the compartment. She goes to the oxygen tank, connects the gauge, and reports to the rest of the crew that there is enough oxygen to fill the two tanks. David sends a canister down the rope and Zoe fills it up and trades it for a second one. Partway through the second canister, an alarm sounds on the headset, signifying a solar storm. The captain says that the storm will strike in 20 minutes and that they should head back immediately. Zoe wants to finish the second tank but eventually agrees with David and Bales in favor of safety. With 8 minutes until the storm, Zoe and David are only a quarter of the way back to base and they begin to hurry. On Zoe's final descent, she picks up speed and loses control, dropping the canister as she reaches the base. David arrives shortly after, they are disappointed but safe. Inside the ship, the safe return of Zoe and David is overshadowed by the persistent need for oxygen. It is decided that they need to go back for the final canister. Captain warns that the solar storm will continue for hours and the amount of radiation the storm will create will be lethal even in a spacesuit. Michael knowing he won't come back volunteers to go, but they deem it too risky for an amateur. Both David and Zoe then volunteer, with Zoe eventually convincing him to let her go. Joking that David and his wife should have children and send them to Yale. After some hard goodbyes, Zoe leaves the safety of the ship for the canister. She is encircled by multicolored waves of radiation, 
but retraces her previous journey and safely retrieves the canister. The return trip is a difficult one with the heavy canister, but Zoe safely completes the journey and gets the oxygen to the crew. Zoe then sits on the edge of the base as her face begins to show signs of radiation poisoning. She weakens, and as the camera drifts away from the ship, we hear once more about how Zoe planned to do research on Earth but thought it would be funny to tell people she was rejected from HARP. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.